And here with us at Post 9 and a first on CNBC interview is W.K. Kellogg CEO Gary Pilnick. He joins us after ringing the opening bell. He bought his friends. There are a lot of characters here from serials we know. Gary, welcome. Thank you for having me. So you're getting rid of Pringles and Pop-Tarts and just focusing on cereal. That's what right. is that going to allow you to do? That's going to allow us to become an even stronger company because we're independent. At the end of the day, everything we're going to do is in service of cereal. We have a strategy to create great value. And none of this, well, the key pillars of what we're doing would have been done but for the spin. Because now we get to make decisions that have a singular focus on what is the very best way to invest in and drive the cereal category for the W.K. Kellogg Company. What, what does that mean? Does that mean more acquisitions? Does it mean more innovations? It means a couple of different things. I'd say, let me raise three of them for you. First of all, it's actually a combination of five separate businesses. At the Kellogg Company, we had a business in the Caribbean, Canada, food away from home that was scaled up across seven different categories. Bare Naked and Kashi were run separately, and then U.S. retail. All of that's going to come together. Think about the opportunity to harmonize across the business, but also scale up big ideas. And we get all the consumer customer insights under one leader who can then drive the business accordingly. Another place we go to is for focus. Before at the Kellogg Company, we have a great sales force. It's well known within the industry, and it sells several different categories. Our sales force will have the same coverage. They're only selling cereal. So in the moment of truth, our cereal salespeople, they're going to understand that category as well, if not better than everybody, to help convert shoppers into buyers. The last thing I'll go to is our ability to invest and use our balance sheet the way we want to use our balance sheet. We want to invest 450 to $500 million to modernize our supply chain. Now, that's the centerpiece to our plan to drive expanded margin. It should also help our top line as well. But isn't cereal a tough category? It's been in secular decline for years now, hasn't it? Cereal is a terrific category. It's a very competitive category, always has been. There are tremendous competitors out there, great branded competitors. So, yeah, this, this is not going to be easy. But we know we've got the strategy to go after this. And our view is because we're going to be investing the way we're investing, we think the company that invented the category can do something pretty special going forward. In that uh, regard, though, I mean, so 100 plus years in this uh, in this category, yeah. cereal over that period of time, I mean, it started out as being kind of like a health food, right? I mean, that was the idea. And then it's waxed and wanes in terms of the perception of, of healthiness and whether it's what you want to prioritize in your diet or not. Do you just wait for it to come back into fashion or for customer habits to change? We have a portfolio that actually hits a lot of consumer needs. We think about it in three different groups. We have taste, balance, and health and wellness, some of the leading brands in each one of them. So we have something for everybody. I'd also say I believe there's some misperceptions about the cereal category. It's not a monolith. You walk down that aisle. By the way, it's durable, big. It's been as big as we ever would remember. That's that category. And it's not as if there's one adjective to describe an entire cereal category. But we do think there's some misperceptions. It, it is a healthy, nutritious, op nutritious option for consumers. But Tony the Tiger's here, Frosted Flakes. I mean, the, the Fruit Loops, Toucan. These, these are cereals I grew up eating, but they're sugary, and I don't feed them to my kids. So how do you deal with that change? Well, maybe you'd find it interesting to know that we've been taking sugar out of those cereals and maintaining the taste. In fact, double-digit declines in percentage of sugar in those cereals. You also might be interested to know that cereal eaters get no more, get no more sugar in their diets than non-cereal eaters. They also get a lot more of the nutrients that you're looking for than non-cereal eaters. So I think you should feel good about serving it to your kids. We can talk about that more. Wow.